Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, happy Mother's Day. This is your day, so we celebrate you, we honor you. I think we can go home, right? After listening to those, um, or listening or just watching those videos, it just, it moves you. Because if you're a mother, you understand. You understand the struggle. The struggle is real, right? And, and I love what Susie said. It's in our mind. We, we compare ourselves. We see other families. And we see other children. And whether you're raising uh, babies, toddlers, and twinners, teenagers, and grown adults, and now you're even a grandma, maybe a great-grandma. And then sometimes you see other, other families, and, and you thought that you, you will be further ahead. But now instead of being further ahead, it feels like you have gone like a hundred steps back. So I'm here to tell you that God wants to remind you that you are beloved. He loves you. He loves you with all his heart. He is proud of you. He is not, he hasn't wasted any situation that you've been through. He hasn't wasted any crisis that you had to encounter. He hasn't wasted any experience that you had lived because he is that good and he's going to use it on our behalf. So as you can see, we have our theme of uh, butterflies. Uh, I happen to love butterflies. I, um, I, I think I have a more than a passion, I have an infatuation with butterflies um, because they're beautiful, right? But you know that the butterfly has a process. But I don't like the process. I just want to fly. I just want to look beautiful. And I just want to remind you what the word of God and what God will tell you today. And it's in Psalms 139, 14. And it says, I will give thanks and praise to you, to who, to our God. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. But how many times you as a mother, and today I know it's, it's Mother's Day, so I'm going to be talking to moms. Dads, your day is coming. Okay, and we're going to celebrate you. As you see, our theme is butterfly pink. And I was, I was uh, in, the, in the cafe patio, and I was asking the, the guys, I said, what do you guys want, guns? What, do, what is it that you guys, you know, I don't know what you guys want. Knives, you know, to, you know, I don't know what your deal is, but strength, you know. But I was like, but your day is coming, and we want you to know that we will honor you. But today, we're, I want to talk to moms, to women. But you get to receive because the word of God is for all of us, right? But how many times have you really said to yourself, I am so wonderfully made? And I'm talking about while we're parenting. I'm talking about when our kids are not listening to us. I'm, th I'm talking about when their grades are going down. I'm talking about when the finances are not doing too well. I'm talking when uh, your family or your marriage, is, it's, it's not doing too well. And then how many times have you really got up and said, wow. I'm so awesome. I'm so glad that I'm so fearfully and wonderfully uh, made. And I will praise you, Lord. And I'm going to tell you that that takes faith to say that. And to me, um, and I'm going to say the story because I always go into my story. And, and I, you know, I love butterflies. But when I was growing up, it just happened that in our, in our, in our, in our place, there was this tree that I guess, it, you know, Butterflies, there was like, I don't know, like a hundred uh, cocoons that would come, uh, you know, like to caterpillars. And they were beautiful caterpillars. And, and I was mesmerized with the colors because they're beautiful. And by the way, a fact, if they pee on you, you get, you get really, a really bad rash. <laughs> Happened to me. Because I would be like there and they would pee and pee. And, and then my arm was like this big. But, but I would wait for the process because they were beautiful colors. And by the way, I have them here. And so we have here the caterpillar. You can see him, but you might want to come at the end of the surface. I'll let you see it, but it's alive. Um, and then so I will watch them. This is not a cute one, but I will watch them <laughs> because we have monarchs. So monarchs are beautiful colors. And so I will watch them. And then what they do is they eat and eat and eat and eat every day. They know the process. Actually, the butterfly, the caterpillar, is faithful and trusts the process. 
He doesn't have to remind himself, I am a butterfly. I will be a butterfly. And we have to remind ourselves, I am a child of God. I am a good mom. I, you know, we, you know we, don't, we don't even do that and we don't even believe it many times. They're just be. They're just faithful to the process. So they eat and eat and eat. And then I remember when they will go into the, into the cocoon. You see it here? It goes into the cocoon uh, phase, which is called the chrysalis. And it's the most painful, painful process because everything, everything that the caterpillar was is actually being dissolved. And it's painful. And so I, I wanted to help them when they went into the cocoon. The first day or second day that I saw the cocoons, I would go and I wanted to help the butterflies. I thought that was my calling in life. So I would push them out. <laughs> I would push them out. And this is a true story. You'll watch it in heaven when you go with heaven. Maybe. I would push them out and I would say, you're going to live, you're going to live. And I pushed them out, like, I don't know, 20. And they all die. <laughs> and at the end, when the ones that I couldn't reach because they were too high, and I can see the breaking. Because when the breaking, when they're about to, to you know, to become they're becoming, they're in the process of becoming. It, it takes a while. It's, it's like you want to rush it. Oh, come on. How long is it going to take you for one wing to come out? But if you rush the process, if you by any chance happen to help a cocoon when it's already breaking, and you said, you know, I'm going to do a good job. I'm going to help this butterfly. And then you start actually breaking so they can expand their wings. The moment the butterfly comes out, that's the moment the butterfly dies. Because it needed the pressure. It needed that, it's, it's, it's not only the pressure, it needed the pain. It needed to be able to flight. But I, many times, this is who we want to be. Don't you just want to look great? 24-7, you want our families to look great, and, and, and we refuse to go through the process. And I know we've been talking a lot about a process, but I want to talk to you today not only about the process, but we need to trust the process maker. That he has called us. He thinks that we are brave. If you're a woman, even whether you're a mother or not, you, you're a nurturer. We were designed designed to be nurturers we were designed to give life we were designed to speak life and many times God gives us a promise and we love I love promises but that promise has to go through a process and the process is that it's going to take time and we need to live by the word of God because without faith we will not see the promises of God come to pass do you know how hard it is when God calls us to prophesy, right? Because we prophesy, what, what you're, if you're sitting here like, prophesy, what does it mean? We're just speaking the word of God over ourselves, over our families. We're speaking those things that are not as though they are. That's, that we're prophesying. Yeah, we're speaking life. We're watering what God gave us. But do you know how difficult it is when things that God promised you and you've been standing maybe for a few years, Maybe some people decades and you don't see it. Do you, know, do you know that that's the process when you're dying? That part of you is dying because you, you want to see it. You want to see it come to pass. I want to see the life already. But see, what we don't understand is that in this ugly state, there is still life. This butterfly, because it's already a butterfly, he's not or he, she, whatever, in this little jar, he's not saying, I want to be a butterfly. Let me be a butterfly. No, they trust the process. And we need to trust that whatever season we are in in life, we're able to handle it. Isaiah 61 says this. Because I believe that those are the times that we are living. We're living in times that, that there is no safety. Just this week, something happened in one of those, I think, schools in Palmdale or Lancaster. Someone just took a, a gun, and, 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 you know, it's easy for someone to say, you know, trust God because your kid is not in that school, right? 
But what about the mom or that has the kids in that school? And that's, that's the trust process. That you're able to say every morning, you know, I know that my kids are well taken care of because they are covered by the blood of Jesus. We might not be the best moms. You know, for years, this I have lived by this scripture in Isaiah 60. And God gave it to me. I remember crying out. Um, I think Isaac was like four years old because I never felt good enough to be a mom. Never. And I'm going to be honest with you why I didn't feel good enough. Because I was told that I was never going to be a good enough mom. So how can someone tell you that? But you believed it. So it was imprinted in me. So I knew that if that would ever come, and um, it was to the point that they would, like, size me by my body type. She has no hips, so this child was not going to give birth. By hips? Oh, no, it takes more than hips. <laughs> it's called pushing. <laughs> it has nothing to do with your hips. But I remember being a small child and wanting big hips. I was like, is there any pills I can take at seven? You know, <laughs> can I be curvier? Like, but that stayed within me. And then I came to the Lord and I had to learn. I had to learn not only to love myself. I had to learn that God has trusted me with children. But I remember crying at night thinking that I wasn't a good mom. And I remember, um, I think I started like really, really like letting it go when Alexis was like 14 and now she's 23. But I was always constantly fighting my, my thoughts, fighting the process. Because I never felt inadequate or adequate. I always felt inadequate. I always felt that I wasn't doing good enough. That I wasn't teaching them enough the word of God. That I wasn't, I, I wasn't like so and so. I remember going to birthday parties, and I hated birthday parties because I'm like, oh, my God, we'll go tell the kids, this is what we're going to do. I don't want you jumping. I want you to be well-behaved because you know what? You're going there, but it's about me because if you misbehave, they're going to talk about me. It's not that they talk about you. That's what I used to think. So I was so consumed, so consumed trying to become somebody that I thought I would never be able to be. And one of the scriptures that um, I wanted and I lived by, and, 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 but to me, I thought, how, how can you become the woman? You heard about the Proverbs 31 woman, right? Anyone here heard about the Proverbs 31? The step for wife, right? Read it. Proverbs 31, verse 10 to 31. And he talks about this amazing woman. This amazing woman that, it says that this woman wakes up, Super early. I'm like, okay, that's me. I already, I, I'm not even belonging in that category. She cooks. She brings her, uh, her food from afar. She makes tapestry. Oh, my gosh. Not only does that, but she says that her children wake up every morning. She says her children wake up in the morning super happy, and they call her blessed. How many t times have your child, you woke up, and you're like, you bless a woman? <laughs> I am yet waiting for one of those. <laughs> I know they love me, but they never call me blessed. You bless woman. Wow, like I've been saved for 21 years and I still haven't heard the blessed woman. <laughs> but you read it, but, right, but you put it in context and how you feel about you. And then he says that her husband, she's well known because her husband is in the city council and she passes by and the man is like, that's my woman. She says because she's well known, he says, because her husband speaks so well about her. And so when you read that, I, I, I used to read it, and, and I used to cry out to God, and, and I used to say, Lord, I want to be that woman. I want to be that woman, but it's impossible. First of all, I don't want to. I mean, I want to. I like the idea of being that woman. I just don't want to do what she has to do or have done to be that woman. But what I have understood or understand after 21 years of being a, 
a woman of God is that that woman didn't happen overnight. That the woman became the woman because every day she exercised faith. Because she believed in her family, because she believed in her God, and therefore she did all those things. And I can picture this woman. And one of the uh, 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 verses is in Proverbs 31, 15. It says, even in the night season, she arises and sets food on the table for hungry, for the hungry ones in her house and for others. It says, even in the night seasons. And when you read it, I'm very literal. literal. I, there is another uh, translation that says that she rises while it's still yet dark, while it's still yet night. I love my sleep. And so I thought, this woman has to wake up every, every morning. This woman has to do all these things. But that's not what it means. It means that at any season in her life, even in her winter, she's able to get up and arise. Because the word arise means rising. In the Hebrew means rising in power. But it's not our own power. It's in the power of our maker. Because now we belong to a, a, a different new breed of women. We're not the feminist women that we hate. to be. No, no, no. We're a new breed of women that believe God, that believe in the kingdom of heaven, that believe in the promises of God, and that we know that it takes bravery to stand and believe in faith. It takes faith. Believe me when my daughter says, well, I many times have gone into like, okay, I'm going to start eating, right? The Bible says that we should, we should be fed every day by the word of God. It says that, it says that men should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of who? It doesn't say out of the word that proceeds out of a book, which I am one of a, I'm a book person. It doesn't say that I should live by the word that proceeds out of Oprah, which she's wonderful and I love her. She has a lot of wisdom. It doesn't say you live by the word that your parents told you because they might have done their best. But I'm sure even when they did their best, they felt like they were not doing their best. He says, no, that we should live by bread alone. No, he says, by the word of God. And so I thought about the caterpillar. Eats and eats and he repeats it every day. It's a repetition. In the morning we'll, we eat. And you, you know, we're very faithful. I am very faithful to my eating habits. And I'm sure you are. But when it comes to eating the word of God and to for us nourishing our spirit and our soul, we're not that faithful. Some of us only eat once a week. Some of us eat twice a week. And some of us get to be fed. What does that mean? It means to be fed is that you don't even open the Bible. You just listen to a message. And, and that's wonderful. And it, it will help you. But there is such a difference when you actually grab the word of God and you nourish yourself. So you can have food for not only yourself in the night season, in, in days that in crisis, in chaos. And we have enough within ourselves to be able to arise in power. And not only for us, but for our children. And it says even into the other people that live around you, to others. God has given us great influence. I love what the kids said. It says, without my mom, the house would be chaotic. Because we bring, I believe that we bring a lot of influence into our children. We bring a lot of faith into our children. And I'm going to tell you that, that it, takes, it takes bravery to want to be developed and become a butterfly. It, it, it takes bravery for you to be, want to become who you are. It's not who you're not. We're not trying to be someone that we're not. The Bible says that we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of life. Like it was a switcheroo. We didn't do anything. God paid. We said yes to Jesus. And he said, okay, the moment you say to Jesus, he says, okay, now you're my son. You're my daughter. Now you used to be here in this place. Now you belong into this kingdom. You are a new creation. Now you just have to learn. And it's a process of becoming transformed. 
Our spirit gets renewed the moment we, we, we give our lives to Jesus, but then there is a mind transformation. There is a transformation. I need to learn how to be a mother according to the word of God. I need to be, learn how to be a friend according to the word of God. I need to learn how to be a wife according to the word of God. And I believe that many of you are sitting here today and you find yourself a little bit down. You find yourself like you missed it. Maybe your children are already like out of your house. Maybe you even have grandkids now and you're like, if only I could go back in time. Do you know that God doesn't want you to live in regret? God doesn't want you to live in could have, should have, would have, but didn't. And you know that he is okay with that? He is okay with what you didn't do because then he will make it up for you. Because we have a God that loves us so much that he says, hey, I am giving you my son and he's a redeemer of time. God doesn't have a timeline. We have a timeline. We live in a time zone. He doesn't live in a time zone. He lives in eternity so he can do as he pleases when he wants it. And he is, has the perfect timing for you and I. And I believe that so many of you in your families, you will see that redemption take place this year. I believe that many of you will see your children that you've been, you have been standing for, you have been believing for, and you haven't seen it, and now you even have great-grandkids. I believe that you still have the time to get up and arise in the power of his might and say, no, I will see the promises of God. <laughs> I do believe it. Isaiah 61 says, arise and shine. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Do you know that words arise is the same as the one in Proverbs? It says, arise and shine. And if you read it in the Amplified, it says, arise from that, from that position, from that prostration that you have been. It's almost like you've been so depressed. And that's what he talks about depression. That you've been on the floor, knocked down, thinking that there is no way this is already dead. And I won't be able to get up. And he's telling you, no, no, arise for the time has come. And he says, let my glory be seen upon you. You know, you know women, we don't need to be afraid of, of dark seasons. We don't need to be afraid of winters. I've been in so many winters and many times I elongated. I was the same. What is the little animal that they take out every year to say if it, the winter is going to be long? The groundhog, okay, sometimes I've been my own groundhog. This is going to be a long winter. <laughs> because that's what I perceive. Because that's what I see. But see, it takes courage to stand. And many times it feels like you're standing alone. Because it's only you speaking and agreeing with the word of God. Even if no one's agree, you already have the majority because God is with you, because Jesus is with you, and because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, and he's in full agreement. So you are not alone. But many times you will have to stand alone in the natural and say, no, my family will serve the Lord. No, no, my children will come to know my God. My, my great-grandchildren will know one day that Virginia, she stood when she didn't want to stand. That she believed when she couldn't believe. That at the end of the day, she chose. And this is yielding to the process. When you choose to yield your opinion, when you choose to yield your will and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you because your word says in Romans 8, 28, that all things... We forget when we're in a crisis, we forget in a night season, we forget in a dark moments that all things, all things, it doesn't say some things or good things, profitable things work together for your good. It says all things will work out for your good. It says to those who love God and to those who are called according to whose purpose, your purpose or whose purpose? So you need to know, and I encourage you to read old, 
Romans 8, 28. I was reading it yesterday and I read it like three times and I was in tears. Because you forget. When you're in a dark, in a dark season, you forget. You forget that all things are going to work together for my good. And you repeat it until, until your heart engages with your mind and you said, all things are going to work together for my good. All things are going to work together for my family. All things are going to work together for my children. All things are going to work together for my grandchildren. All things are going to work together for my good because that is my God. And then if you read it, if you read it before, it says that it's, it's talking about hope. It's, it's talking about how God has, he says that we have been adopted. He says now you, you, you belong to a, different, to a different family. Before we were hopeless, he says, but now you have hope. And he says, and if you think you're in hope and you can see it, that's not hope. I was like, oh my gosh, I belong to a kingdom that is upside down. If you want to go up, you go down, right? In order to be elevated, you submit yourself. You yield yourself. If you want to have more, then you give more. And so I was like reminded. And he told me, remind them. Remind them not, never to lose hope. Do not lose hope. Because hope is not a wishful thinking for us as, as, as parents, as mothers. As women of God, it's not just a wishful thinking. I wish, I wish, I may, I wish. I may. You can do whatever you want, but it's not going to happen. No, our hope has a name. And we need to be reminded that that name is Jesus. My hope has a name. And then you have to say and come to a time in your life, and I think we all, we're all in different seasons, so you maybe you're, you're, you're having a wonderful spring, awesome. But know that this is a life journey, and you need to brave it. You need to brave life, brave it. Brave the wilderness. Brave your story. As I was writing this, I told the Lord, you know what? Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to decide to, to accept my belonging. I'm going I'm, I'm to decide to embrace my becoming. Do you know what that means? That every day I'm going to embrace that I'm becoming every day more and more like Jesus. And if I'm going to embrace that becoming more and more like Jesus, it means that I'm going to decrease more and more the way that I think. I'm going to decrease more and more the way that I speak, not only about me, but about every situation. That I'm going to become and I'm going to yield even when I don't want to yield. Because you know what? Even when we don't want to, the Bible says that he, if you will it, he's even, he's even uh, able to help you in your willing. You have to will to will it. Isn't it crazy? And I told the Lord, Lord, why can't you just like have someone come and lay hands on me? And I am so changed and so beautiful and I just fly and give life. But you cannot give what you do not have. So God is telling you, I have given you life. You have life in you. But now we have to develop it. We have to want it. You are a world changer. One of the things that I love about Hebrews, and, I, and I'm going to declare that over you. But when you read up in Hebrews 11, it talks about the whole of uh, faith. Not fame, but faith. And it talks about oh, but all these people that did amazing things. And actually, I want to I want to speak it over you. So if you're a mom, I want you to stand up because I'm going to speak what Hebrews says about you. That this is the kind of women we are. This is the kind of mothers we are. This is the kind of grandmother you are. And this is what it says. Being brave is able to stand in the face of adversity. Being brave is able to stand even in the midst of chaos and fear. So many times we're afraid of fear because fear is there. But do not fear. 
because that's when we activate and we say, you know, fear is here because then that, that's my opportunity to experience and to exercise my faith. But this is what Hebrew says. And this is what I'm going to speak over you, that you are a woman who through faith you will subdue kingdoms. But what kingdoms? I don't know why you need to overcome that. Through your faith, you're going to subdue it. You're that kind of woman. That through your faith, you're going to work righteousness. What does it mean? You're going to do what is right in the eyes of God. What does God think of, thinks about my situation? That's, it's, that's what is called working righteousness. Through faith. You cannot do it without faith. I'm going to declare that you are going to obtain your promises. And I'm going to declare that you're going to stop the mouth of lions. Well, maybe we don't have like physical lions, but we have mouth. There's a mouth that's talking about you. There's a liar. There's people that are talking. There's people that are criticizing you. And you know what? Be okay with criticism. Because we can take it. Because we're going to stop it with our faith. That you're a woman who's going to quench the violence of fire. That you're a woman who's going to be made strong. Who's going to become valiant in battle. Do you understand that? We don't become strong and brave before the battle. No, we become valiant in the battle. So in the process, not here. I don't become valiant when I'm already with my wings. I'm, I become valiant here. In my darkest moment. And that's who you are. And I'm going to declare that you're a woman who's going to turn to fly the armies of whatever comes against you. Because greater is he who lives in you than he who lives in the world. And there were women who will receive our debt raised back from the dead. But what does that mean? But many, maybe... Many, some of my, our dreams, some of our promises that we have believed for our families, maybe you find them today and they're dead. They, they're already dust. It doesn't look like they will ever return or come back. But I'm here to tell you that according to your faith and with our God, it says that we're able to see our dead raised. So I'm going to believe that whatever you're believing today, you're standing that you alone and with the agreement of God and all of us together, we're saying, you know what? We will see the promises of God come together. And that you're valuable and that you're beautiful and that there is power living inside of you. And you cannot be afraid of the darkness. And do not run from the process because then we will repeat it all over again. Do not be afraid of your winters. So I want you to raise your hand and I want to pray for you. Well, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for every mom here today. And I thank you, Father God, that you knew them before the foundation of the earth and you entrusted them with their children. And I thank you, Father God, that you are their strength, that you are their hope. I don't know where they are and what season they're in in their lives, but you know all things. And I thank you that today they are going to know that you love them. They will know their value. They will know their identity. They're not trying to be someone. No, they're becoming more and more like you every day. And Father, I declare peace. I declare restoration. I declare deliverance and redemption over their families in the mighty name of Jesus. And I plead your blood. And I declare that no weapon formed against them and their family will prosper. But that these are women that will leave a legacy, a legacy of love, a legacy of faith. That they will say, it was because of my mom, it was because of my grandma. That their names will be known not only in heaven but on earth, Father. So I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.